Hi, this is a quick tutorial on how to make auto stereograms using Blender. You can get Blender for free from blender.org. Auto stereograms, also known as magic eye pictures, are those pictures that were very popular in the 90s where you have a random dot pattern that looks like really nothing, but when you focus on it in a special way, like looking through the image, a 3D image actually props out of the pattern. This without any glasses or anything else. So let's get started. And when you open up Blender, you start, you're start. you faced with something like this. You have a cube here, which we don't need, so we'll hit X and simply erase the cube. Now, this is not a modeling tutorial, so I'll hit the space bar and add Mesh Monkey. We have a ready model we can use for this demo. Now, if you hit the zero key on the number pad, you will see the view from the actual camera that we're going to use to render this. The outer dotted line here indicates what will actually be included in the image. And the inner dotted line is the TV safe, but we can safely ignore that for now. As you'll notice, Susan, our monkey here, is actually facing upwards, and we want her to be facing forward. I'll hit the 3 key on the number pad to view her from the side, and then hit the R key to rotate her around. And then I left click when I'm happy with her position. I'll hit the 0 key again to go back to the camera. Now I want to move the camera into place. An easy way to do this is to hit Shift F. This lets you move the camera a little bit like a first person shooter. Use the mouse wheel to control the speed forward and backward, and then you aim it simply by moving the mouse around. We go a little bit closer, uh, maybe a little bit further in, and then, oops, that's a little bit much. It can be a little bit tricky from time to time. Uh, and when we're happy with it, maybe around here, we simply left click and leave it at that. Now, this model looks a little bit jagged, so maybe we want to smooth it a little bit. We go down here to the buttons view and we hit Add Multi-Res and Add One Level. You don't need to worry too much about details in the model for auto stereograms, as this won't really show up in the final auto stereogram. Now we can render a quick view of this image. We'll turn off the shadow and all these extra effects, as we don't really need them. Uh, and we'll do this full screen, and then hit Render. Now I can see a nice model of Susan. The next thing we need to do is to turn this image into a depth information image. That's an image where black is first away from camera and the white is then closest to the camera. And Blender has a nice compositor we can use for this. You have these different modes, but you don't have one for the compositor, so I like to add my own. Simply duplicate the model view, and we'll call it something else. We'll call it composit compositing. There we go. And then we open the node editor. Now to activate the compositor and node editor, we click this little face, and we do use nodes. Here is the rendered image, and here is the image that will come out of the compositor when it's rendered from the compositor. To actually enable rendering from the compositor, you need to hit the Do Composite button down here. Now we're going to add a few nodes here we can use for our composite. First, we'll add a new output node, which is a viewer. And we'll drag it over here, and we'll turn on Backdrop. Backdrop is actually what comes out of the viewer and gives us a bigger image of what we're actually doing. Now, the Set channel you see here is the actual depth information. And if you were to connect that directly to the viewer, we'd simply get a white result. And this is not really what we want. We need to convert this to an image that goes from black to white. So we add another node. We go to Color node and we node Map Value. And instead of connecting this to Set Value to the viewer, we connect it through this one. Well, it's still white. We remove this alpha channel as we don't need an alpha channel. And the reason it's white is because the offset is a little bit wrong. We'll start off with, say, minus 4. Now our offset is a little bit behind, so that you just see the outline. By adjusting the offset gradually, we slowly see the shape show up. We want it so that it's not really burned out either on the black or the white. I'm guessing minus 2.75 is about right for this one. It depends completely on how you place your camera and, and your model. So it's almost black and going to almost white over there. The only thing that remains to do is actually invert this image. So we go spacebar, add color, invert. We drag from here to the color and put that into here. And we get the image in the correct colors. Now, for this actually to show up here in the composite, we need to connect this to the image in the composite. And this is the image we'll get when we render it out. There's just a few things left to do. We need to choose the format we want to use. I like to use PNG. It's non-lossy compressed, so you won't lose any quality. And we want to set the resolution much higher, because you notice these jagged lines here? These can cause some problems. And to get around them, as uh, the depth channel actually doesn't have any anti-alias, 
and you need to get around them. And the only way to do that is really to render the image at a really high resolution and then scaling it down in an image editor, such as the GIMP, to get rid of them. So we'll just render this image out at, say, 4,000 by 3,000 pixels. And we're ready to go. Now, once you have the image ready, you can use any of the different auto stereo programs to turn this into a stereogram. Uh, I use Linux and Ubuntu, and on that you have one in the repository just simply called Stereograph. You can install it by doing sudo apt-get install stereograph or using the Synaptic Package Manager and searching for it there. Uh, and it's pretty easy to use. For Windows and OS X, you can simply Google Stereogram, Auto Stereogram Maker or something like that and you'll find a multitude of different ones. And here is our image pretty much done. And we'll zoom out a little bit. And you can see we now have an image where black is first away and white is what's nearest to the camera. And that's about it. Good luck.